were still there six days, and each day I would go out. Well, we were near the end of the island, about a half mile back, and my battalion commander called me in, who's, who's now garrison. He said, T.J., I want you to go out. It's daytime, and I know you never go out daytime, and see what's at the end of the island. I don't think we have any opposition. So I said, okay. Well, we went out, and on the way over, I showed you a picture of that cliff. In the bottom of the cliff, there's a cave inside. And uh, didn't pay attention, didn't use my head because you should have cleaned it out. But we went beyond it. And on the way back, I said, geez, we got to check that hole out. Well, there's this immaculate dressed Japanese officer with field glasses. I brought up my rifle. I'm going to kill him. He goes, no, no, no. He's going to give me the glasses. So I walked up to him and said, uh, where would you speak, learn to speak English? United States. You were assigned to the ambas uh, ambassador in Washington and San Francisco. So anyway, I said, tell your men to come out of the cave. He said, they're not going to come out. They're going to die for the emperor. And I said, why don't you? He said, you think I'm crazy? I will get on your stomach. If you move, you're dead. But well, it took us about a half hour to clean the cave out. We cleaned the cave out. And everybody got guns, whatever they wanted. But there are two suitcases, about like this. I picked them up, brought them out, showed them to him. He said, they're mine. He said, no, they're not. They're mine now. Are they triggered? He said, no. I opened them up, and it was all full of Japanese money. Now, he was in charge <coughs> of all the airplanes from Japan all the way back to Pearl Harbor. That's, that was how, how high he was. Well, anyway, I uh, turned him into the battalion commander, went back to the front, and a runner came running up, said they want that money. So I took the money, took it back, and asked him what the story was. He said that he wants that money, and he thinks he can negotiate taking that money and shipping it to Switzerland or Spain. See, Spain wasn't involved in this too much. And then... After the war, he and his family would go overseas. Well, anyway, I turned him in and I left. Now, that's the end of the story. Uh, the war has been over 70 years. But when I got back, I'm going to say for 30, 40 years, I've tried to find out what happened to that man. No one knows what happened to him. They say they shipped him to Pearl Harbor. They say he was killed. Nobody wants to talk about the story. And uh, I've had this Cuento group has been coming to the United States for 60, 70 years, digging up American bodies and shipping them back. And I got to be friendly with them. And when they went to Japan, they went to the little town where he was born. They went looking for it and it was disappeared. They took it and dismantled it. Gone completely. But anyway... No one wants to talk about it. And when I wrote this book, I sent it to the, my general. And uh, he wrote me back and said, Tom, send a copy of that to Quantico, Virginia. Well, later on, I talked to him and I asked what the story is. He said, I can't talk about what happened to Vice Admiral. This is backing you up, but your story is true. Well, anyway... I've had this guy, Wayne Matson. He's got four or five letters in there he wrote me. Uh, he's looked into it, and he finally said to me, Tom, I think whoever got him higher up killed him and kept the money. And that's about the best we can do.